In this video, we define the congruence class of a integer modulo some other integer n. And so we say the congruence class of a modulo n is the set of all integers that are congruent to a modulo n. So this means um, we take the set of all b, such that b is an integer, so that b is congruent to a mod n. And so let's look at some examples to make sure this definition makes sense. Let me change screen to black here for better contrast. Okay, so in congruence modulo 5, we have that 9 is equal to the set of 9 plus 5k such that k is an integer. So how does this uh, match what we want? Well, we know that the set of 9 is supposed to be the set of all integers so that, that are congruent to 9 mod 5. So if we do the set of all b such that b is congruent to 9 mod 5, That's the same thing as the set of all b, such that 5 divides b minus 9. So this is a set of all b, such that, and you know what, I'm going to get rid of this such that symbol, just because it's starting to look like the division. It's getting a little confusing. So here we go. Okay, so we want the set of all b such that 5 divides b minus 9, and so that means that b minus 9 is equal to 5k for some k. So we want the set of all b um, equals 9 plus 5k. So writing it the way that we started with is a different way um, of using uh, what's given in a definition here. Similarly, in congruence modulo 11, Let's see, so I'm running out of space here, the bottom of the screen. So here we go. I'll just kind of move up a little bit. So in congruence modulo 11, we have that nine is going to, the congruence class of 9 is going to be equal to the set of 9 plus 11k such that k is an integer. And uh, just a really quick note, um, we could also use the notation Uh, the congruence class of 9 modulo 5, like that, and the congruence class of 9 modulo 11, like this. And so you'll see this used in the book um, and then also throughout the notes, so I just wanted to introduce the notation. So we have the definition of a congruence class of some integer modulo another integer n. So let's look at the following theorem. This tells us that if a is congruent to b mod n, then we have that the congruence class of A and the congruence class of C are equivalent modulo N. So let's prove this. This is an if and only if, which means we have two directions to prove. So the first we're going to do is we're going to let A be congruent to C mod N. 
And we're going to use that as our assumption and show that that has to imply that the congruence class of A is equivalent to the congruence class of C. We want to use a containment argument here. Namely, we want to show, so we want to show that the congruence class of A is contained in the congruence class of C. And let me move to another line and write this. and vice versa. And that will give us equality. So let's start with the first containment. So let B be some element in the congruence class of A. Then we know that that has to mean that B is congruent to A mod N. And since we assume that A is congruent to C mod N, and now we have that A is, and B is congruent to A mod N by transitivity. Uh, let's see. Keep underestimating the edge of the screen here. By transitivity, B is congruent to C mod N. So just recapping, we have that B is congruent to A mod N, but A is congruent to C mod N. So by this transitivity property of congruence, we can say that B is congruent to C mod N. All right, so what does that mean? We started off with some elements, um, B, in the congruence class of A, and we showed that that element has to be congruent to B mod N, which is the same thing as saying that B is in the congruence class of C. So this tells us that A is contained in C, namely the congruence class of A is contained in the congruence class of C. Now let's try to show the opposite direction. So now we're going to let B be in the congruence class of C. So what do we know? So we have that that implies that B is congruent to C um, mod N. And by assumption, we can say that C is congruent to A mod N by um, symmetry. So once again, we're gonna use transitivity. We have B is congruent to C mod N and C is congruent to A mod N. So by transitivity, of congruence, we have that B is congruent to A mod N. So this tells us that the congruence class of B, excuse me, this tells us that B is an element of the congruence class of A because B is congruent to A mod N. So this tells us that C is contained in the congruence class of A. So it follows, since they're contained in one another, that they must be equal. So we have the first direction of our proof. The next thing we want to do is show that if the congruence classes are equal, then A has to be congruent to C mod N. So suppose that A, the congruence class of A, is equal to the congruence class of C. So since A is congruent to itself by reflexivity, what can we say? We have that A is in its own congruence class. So A is in the congruence class of C. So this implies what we want.
right? So we've explored the fact that the congruence classes are equal. A is congruent to itself, and so we have it's in its own congruence class, and that congruence class is equal to C, so A is contained in C, and so A has to be congruent to C mod N based on our definition that we introduced in the previous slide. So this is one characterization of congruence classes uh, that are equivalent. In the next theorem, we want to focus on an important point um, that just tells us that two congruence classes modulo N are either disjoint or identical. So we won't provide the proof here, it is in the notes, but it's just worth knowing. So if we are given any two congruence classes, um, they are either distinct, as in they are not equal, or they are the same. There is no other option. And you know, I actually think I will do this proof because it actually is an important fact, so I won't leave it out. Don't want to leave you guys hanging. So um, let's see what we have here. We want to show that two congruence classes are either disjoint or identical. So um, if A and C, we'll call them A and C, are disjoint, we are done, right? Because we want to show they're either disjoint or identical. So if they're already disjoint, then we don't have any more work to do. Um, so now suppose that they share at least one element. So if they're disjoint, it means they have no elements in common. So now let's suppose they have one element in common and just see what that implies. Well, the first thing it implies is that if we intersect them, remember the intersection of two sets is what they, that's the, the set of elements that they all have in common. If they share at least one element, then their intersection is going to be non-empty because in particular, that one element is going to be in that intersection. So what this means is that, so there exists some integer b, so that B is in both congruence classes. So B is in the congruence class of A, and B is in the congruence class of C. This implies, by the definition, that we introduced in the very first slide of this video, we have that B is congruent to A mod N, and B is congruent to C mod N. Since congruence is an equivalence relation, we know by transitivity that that implies that A is congruent to C mod N.